These are the questions I ask my students on the first day of class. And you can imagine by reading the questions, the notes I get back. They amaze me, they motivate me, and they inspire me. And here's what I learned from them. I learned from them that there's a mindset for failure or a mindset for success. So let me tell you a fun one. I won't say the student's name, but a student said to me, I would rather die than give a speech. I coach corporate clients in the summer when I'm not teaching. And they'll say, you know, I'd rather go to the dentist and get a root canal than give a speech. That's their mindset. But the best one I ever received, a student who said, Mrs. Miracle, if I have to give a speech, I'm going to projectile vomit on the whole audience. <laughs> So, you can imagine that I realized I had my work cut out for me. So this is the journey I take my students and my clients on. It's the same journey we'll go to in a shortened version today. We've got to uncover the confidence killers. We know that unless we create a confidence GPS, we will hold ourselves back from the talent that we deserve. Our God-given talent, what we were given. We've got to realize that and value it. So we've got to get the right mindset and then create that GPS. So today, we're going to uncover some of your confidence killers, look at your particular activating system and how you're using it, and get to the core of you knowing your value. And why is this so important? Well, let's talk about the current society. I want to be really, really honest with you about what's going on in today's society. In today's society, we have a culture, and this culture can be compare and despair. How many of you know people that their lives look oh so amazing on social media, but in truth they're not? Can you name a friend like that? Well, Compare and Despair tells us that everyone is doing all these great things. And we can look at ourselves and say, wow, what am I doing? That's the wrong mindset. Because what that is, is it's saying a lie. Instead of jumping on social media, what I advise our clients to do is create their own strategic personal brand, knowing what their value is, sharing the items that will help them get to where they want to go. But in our society, one post that goes viral can kill a brand, whether that's a product or a company, or can damage your reputation. Fair? So how do we work through it? Well, first, I want you to know 10 years of research to create this book, Your Strategic Personal Brand. Now, why did I do that? Because I saw people failing, and they had huge amounts of talent, but they didn't know it. You know, I can tell you to be confident, but until you believe it, nothing will change. So I want to share, this is a comment society. Everyone can comment. You can write something, spend tons of time on research, and then someone comments who has no qualification, no research, but they give you this awful feedback. Now, when my mom passed in June, our chief creative officer gave me this keychain. It's really helped me a lot. So it says, life is tough, my darling, but so are you. That's my mom's voice in my head. And I have to realize, people are not always kind. And those voices, if you let them control your level of confidence, that's not real. You need to build your confidence on your God-given talents and the value that you provide. Isn't it sad? Click to comment, and anyone can say anything they want. And that goes right into your head and can kill your confidence. So let's work on that. I want you to look at my screen, take a look at all of these questions. I'm going to be real honest with you. At one time or another in my life, one of these questions I fell victim to. There are people who maybe aren't as kind when they're trying to push you. And maybe that level takes down your confidence. Those words take down the level of your confidence. But did you qualify them? Yes, we love our friends and family, but are they always the best comment? Or are they the subject matter expert in what you're trying to do? So yes, we know that we can have guilt, we can take something that's happened in our lives and determine our confidence level just based on that. So I'm going to be real honest with you today and tell you there's two types of people in this world. Those who care and those who are curious. And you better know the difference. Hopefully you can see this slide because it shows a cute little kitten that says, I really want you to pet me, but I kind of want to bite you. <laughs> If you knew and approached this kitten knowing that these two things are in her head, you'd want to know which one. Are you going to bite me or I really want you to pet me? Well, we have to look at ourselves and our relationships. 
and the people that we surround ourselves with. There are people who care, and there are people who are curious. Now, I'm going to share something with you because I'm hoping that you guys are going to take this wisdom into the workplace. When I graduated from college, one of my first job interviews, I'd been through a horrible tragedy in college, and I go into my first job interview. I had an interviewer that made me wait 45 minutes past the appointment time. This person then talked on the phone with his wife, with me in the room, and as well walked out of the interview for about 30 minutes. But I was young, I didn't know any better, I didn't have a confidence plan of action. I thought that's what interviews are like, and they're not, so don't worry. <laughs> if they are, get up and leave. What I needed was, I needed a spy strategy, and that's what I do now. A spy strategy would have told me that this company that I was interviewing with was a good company. I just happened to be interviewing with an office that had huge turnover, a landmine of problems. Now, I told you I went through a tragedy, didn't have a confidence plan of action. I accepted that job, even though that, interview treated, that interviewer treated me like that. I took that job because I needed a job. I didn't have the confidence to know that my value was more. If I had done spy strategy and researched, I would have taken the job with the office 20 minutes north that would have developed my skills. They were a great team. It would have been wonderful. Friends, the importance of the confidence plan of action is this. I worked for that company for a year, and I went to a regional meeting. That interviewer was a regional director. That regional director sexually harassed me in front of a bunch of coworkers, everybody on the team from all the different offices. Now, I let that happen to me. I didn't respect myself. Look at this slide, it says respect yourself, respect others. I was very good at respecting others, but I didn't respect myself. I needed the spy strategy to listen more and talk less, to step back, but before I jumped to the workplace, or a new project, or a volunteer project. What are my skills? What are my God-given talents? What is my level of confidence? Is this a distraction for what I'm really supposed to be doing? That's how you use spy strategy. So let me just share with you this slide, G-I-G-O. Who knows what that stands for? Garbage in, garbage in, garbage out. You got it. Garbage in, what are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you reading? Is it helping your confidence or tearing it down? What helped me the most in my spy strategy is this quote. Is this a test, a temptation, or a treasure? Let's say that you're asked to do a project. Is this a test, a temptation, or is it truly treasure? Knowing me over the years, I've always been that person who I'm really excited about projects, and I used to jump into things all in. I'm all in. Now looking back, some of those were total distractions from where I really needed to be. So I want you to think about you. Is it a test, is it a temptation, or is it a treasure? And let's talk about you just for a second, because I'm gonna be real open with you, and I asked Elizabeth about this when we talked on our lunch. Um, when I was in college, I mentioned to you that a tragedy happened. It did not happen on campus. But I want you to look at my slide. My slide says, what happened and what did you make it? I was supposed to be with my friends. My friends were kidnapped a night that I wasn't with them. I was supposed to be there. My friends were taken from this life at 21 and 22 years old. I carried guilt because I believed that if I had been with them, they wouldn't have been murdered. I believed that. Now that I'm older and I know the scenario, I would have died too. My father was very blunt with me and said, if you would have been with them, you wouldn't be here. But what I did was I made it that I had guilt that deep down inside it wasn't good enough, that if anybody really knew who I was because I wasn't there for my friends, that they wouldn't like me or they would think differently about me. I wasn't there with them because I had gotten an argument with one of my friends three days before. But I carried that guilt. So I don't know what you're going through, I don't know what's happening in your life, but I want you to write down the word shadow. A shadow for some people could be a breakup they haven't gotten over. A shadow for someone is maybe not being, feeling loved by a parent, whatever that shadow is. If we don't attack the confidence plan of action and create it, it holds you back. And it did for me, it led into my negative thoughts 
it made me feel guilty. Sometimes I feared success. I thought, wow, my friends aren't here, and why do I get to do this? Why do I get to do this with my life? So what I had to do was take small steps that you're gonna, we're going to talk about today for you to create a confidence plan of action. What happened with my friends happened. I can't change it. But what I can do is make my pain a campaign. I wrote a book. It's now in four countries. The book helps people. Why did I do that? Friends, the day that book was released, I wanted to hide my head under my covers. Ask my husband. I was like, oh, God, it's out there. My story's out. But the truth is, it helps people. Now, this book, I had no idea I would do that. I want my friends back. I was supposed to open my business that I run today with one of my friends, Dawn. I didn't get to do that. I didn't want this to happen in my life, but there's going to be things that happen or come up or crisis, and you've got to be able to handle them. Today, I know you learned a lot about leadership, and you learned about how do we make it as women? How do we kick some glass? We've got to take what's happened to us and make it a pain into a campaign. If you let that shadow dominate you, it will hold you back from your success. So I'm going to share something really weird with you. I know you probably look at this screen and you think, oh, what's this parking deck? One of the steps to create your confidence is you need to slay the things that you fear. My friends were not murdered in the parking deck, but for whatever reason, it manifested in me after my friend's murders. I had PTSD. I didn't know that at those days. They didn't know what that was, but I couldn't go through a parking deck. I was so afraid. I was afraid someone was underneath the car. They were going to get me. So I just couldn't do it. Well, you know, if you're a senior in college, you've got to go look for jobs. You've got to park in parking decks, and you've got to get through to the interview, right? So... I told you that I was creative, but I was also rebellious because here's what I did. I reframed and used storyboarding to help me get through the parking deck. What I would do is I would walk through the parking deck, I would swear like a sailor, and I would yell, if you're underneath the car and you think you're going to get me, I have a knife in my purse. I'm going to get you first. So I was like this crazy lady, <laughs> but it gave me power and it gave me confidence, and I made it through the parking deck. So I kept doing it, and it worked. It really gave me a lot of confidence to get through. Especially, you know, if you leave at night, you're kind of scared, it's kind of creepy in the park. I'd be like, I'm gonna get you, I'm a black belt. You know, <laughs> here's the story. I didn't know, but one day there was a guy sitting in a car at his window down, and he heard me. So he said, ma'am, got out of the car, can I help you? And I told him my story. I told him about my friends. I told him how much I missed my friends. We just had this great conversation. And he, we both laughed at my antics to get through the parking deck. But guys, I don't fear that anymore. I have the confidence. I slayed that fear. That's what confidence building is. It's taking what you're doing and being creative and courageous and doing something different to, again, overcome it. And I want to be honest with you. I also had to prepare my heart. My friend's death was a national case all over the media. And I want you to know there were people who asked questions they shouldn't have asked. There were people who said things that they shouldn't have said. It would hurt my heart. I'd let it come in. I would take it. I don't want you to do that. I want you to prepare your heart. Prepare your heart by raising your emotional intelligence. And here's what I do. I have for my confidence plan of action in my phone when your calendar comes up, every day at 7, 10 a.m., it says, you make me so very happy. We lost my father in January, and during the time of his death, hospice played that song. My dad loved that song. So when I hear that or I see that phrase in my phone every day at 7, 10 a.m., it's like my father's voice is with me. And it really guides me because he always pushed me. He really thought I could do anything. I need that. Think about that. What do you need to put in your phone from the moment you wake up that will help you to grow your confidence? Now, some of you are very visual. So I created a Pinterest board for you. It's called Catherine Miracle. My quotes, please share. They're totally free, but they're all with design. They all have pictures and inspiration. And I know that that will help you and they're free. You have to set your day like that because if you wake up in the morning and you say, and this is sad, but this is what a lot of people do, they wake up in the morning, gosh, I don't like my hair, I don't like what I'm wearing, today is going to be really a pain in the butt. So you've set your mind to look for problems, do you see? So instead, what I want you to do is set it up so the voices in your head are good, the good things that you do, and show the talents that you have. 
Now you may say, okay, well, this is a lot of work. It's not, it's small little habits. Because here's what happens if you don't have this. I know you're looking at this and maybe saying, well, that'll never be me. I'll never have to talk with media. Well, you know I'm a PR firm. I work with people who have to talk to media all the time. Understand, you could post something in an hour and it goes viral and all of a sudden, this is your life. I want you to prepare not only your heart that we talked about, but prepare what you're going to say. The key words and phrases that reflect your strategic personal brand. I know as a leader, there were times I didn't want to answer questions, but I had to. I had to know what my comment was and be strong in it. I want you to think steps ahead because as a leader, problems may arise and you have to be ready for that. So these are the kind of notes that I want you to have before you enter in to a tough time. And again, leadership can be awesome and fun and love it, but you have to know what you're gonna say. So you're gonna prepare that, that's confidence. <coughs> the other part is I wanna talk about stress. Raise your hand if you ever have stress. There's good stress and bad stress. The word how needs to be banished from your vocabulary. I will see a student who will say, how am I gonna get this speech done? Or I'm working with a client and they say, how am I gonna get this presentation done? Or even my staff, how are we gonna get that ad campaign done? How creates obstacles and stress. If you say, in what ways can I get it done? Well, with the speech, you're gonna work on it five minutes on Friday, 20 minutes on Saturday, half an hour on Sunday to prepare and be ready. So in what ways makes you form lists, and that's how we get things done. But if you say, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get it done? We've gotta to move to ways. And I'm gonna give you a secret. I hope you take a picture of this slide, feel free to. These are your three secrets. As leaders, if we don't have self-respect, other people will not respect us. If we are not achieving balance, I don't know what your balance is, and I'm not someone who believes we all need the same timeline. There are morning people, there are night people. Our graphic designers, they're sending me stuff at three in the morning. I get up at six, I see it. We make it work. You've gotta make balance work for you. Some of you may be feeling like, Catherine doesn't understand what I'm going through. I, I don't control my calendar, my boss does. But you can break down what is due and work to ask for help. And here's what I mean by that. Asking for help does not mean asking anyone. How many of you have ever asked friends for advice and got bad advice? I want you to seek experts. Kicking some glass means you're not asking everyone their opinion. You're asking people who've been through it and have done it. And I want you to know, this is how you get to, what would I do if I knew I would not fail? You set yourself up with preparation of the heart, with mind self, you have identified the confidence killers. You know how to work, but do you know how much time you've had in a week? Take a look at my slide. This is my week. I don't have 24 hours in a day. I like to sleep. I was the girl who went on spring break at 18 hours in the bus. I slept. I'm a sleeper. I like my sleep. 17 hours a day is my work time. That's 119 hours a week. Some of you may say, but looking at your slide, what's MR? Well, that's my company, Miracle Resources. I do work 60 hours a week. I like to. I have grown children. I have the ability to do that. When my kids were younger, I did work, but I didn't put in those kind of hours. Now, for some people, your hours are different than mine. But if you don't know how much time you have in a week, then how can you play it? So here's how I play mine. Look at Civic. That's one hour, as you can see behind me. Civic means I'm going to meet with someone to help them, either to mentor them or to maybe talk with them, give some advice. I get a lot of requests on that. What happens if I do that seven times a week? That seven hours is gonna mess me up. Now, faith is something that goes throughout my whole week, no doubt about it, but attending a service, I have down for like two. Each one of us is different, but if you know how you're spending your time, you avoid this. Check this out. This is my old calendar. Isn't it funny? It looks like I've got all kinds of time. Like I've got all these big spaces. What that calendar is, is just stuff I had to do. That's a lie. Your calendar should be broken down into small bits of time. This is my new calendar. It's broken down into small windows of time. I use apps, I want you to as well. I set alarms. 
And I do want to say to you, because we all work very hard, I do believe sitting is the new smoking. And I can sit and do somebody's marketing plan and three hours go by and I'm in what we call flow and I'm loving it. And that's not good. So I have to set alarms so I get up and move. It is true that we take on a lot and sometimes we don't think about breaking it into small packages. So I just want to ask you, how many of you feel very, very stressed if you are overloaded? Raise your hand. Is that your number one confidence killer? Raise your hand if it is. It is for me. If I feel I'm going to fail or I feel I'm going to let someone down, that really gets me. That's my confidence skill. It'll really shake me. So I have to work to stay in balance. I'm sure you've heard balance through the day and thought, but how do I handle that? I have a job, I have kids, I have all these different things, or I'm graduating, or it's my senior year. How do I handle that? Well, you're going to have to look at how many hours you have in a week and break it down. And honestly, some things say no to, and look, is it a test, a temptation, or a treasure? Should it be something I'm working on? Is it just something I like? And there's nothing wrong with doing things we like, but how much time are we devoting to it? So I'm pretty diligent about this. There's a ton of social, a ton of fun, a ton of family time in this calendar. And yes, it does rotate. Sometimes there may be something serious to do for work on a Saturday. But take a look at my Sunday night, if you would. Sunday night, there's two work sessions. It makes me feel ready for the week. It makes me feel I'm planned. It gives me confidence. You don't know what your day is going to look like, but if you have preparation of the heart and of what you're saying, and even of control of your calendar, because you've looked at it, Sunday night is key to be ready for Monday. So I do pie charts, and I break it down, and I look at how my time was spent. Am I spending it well? I know it may seem a little over the top, but it really helps me. Because if I look back at a week and say, wow, I really blew it on this area, I can fix it for the next area. I don't beat myself up about that. But I want to be honest about stress. I'm going to put these all up and let you look at them. How many of you have accountability partners on projects? Good, excellent. How many of you have mentors? How many of you are mentoring other people? Which you should be and you will be more. How many of you believe that if you get people to trust you, you do it through your actions? How many of you want to be a leader? Raise your hand. You can't get people to do things and delegate things unless they trust you. You've got to get, you've got to get them to believe in you through your actions. So when you're doing things and preparing, you show your confidence and that helps people believe in you. The other part is visualizing your success. How many of you know someone that doesn't live to their potential? They've got a ton of talent, but they don't live to their potential. Raise your hand if you know someone. Me too. Most of that is because they can't visualize success. They think they're going to fail because some failure has happened in the past or some shadows holding them back. The most important thing for leaders, and I know you've heard a lot of great things today, I'm just going to share mine. You have to have vision. You have to be able to visualize success and vision what things could be and have the confidence to back it up. So I mentioned mentors and mentees, but I haven't told you about heroes. I want you to find someone who's doing what you want to do. One person, maybe they're not doing everything but that you want to do, but one person who's successful, just one, that's your hero. Mine was a gentleman that you probably don't know. His name was Lou Tice. Lou passed about three years ago. My mentor met him through social media. I found him. I wanted to be doing what he's doing. He was across the country speaking. He had a training company, which I had my own training company. He didn't have the marketing and PR, but what he had was the training company and the different thought process that my company brings. How did we get there? Because I watched Lou. He was my hero. He was my subject matter expert. Who's your person? And the other part, do you know what an oxygen list is? You probably saw it on my screen and thought, what's that? How many of you know people that they could truly suck the oxygen out of the room? You know, okay. I'm not asking you to cut them off, but you have to have your oxygen list. People who you enjoy, people who give you oxygen, people who believe in you, you have great conversations and learn from each other. And you give them oxygen. This is a 50-50 thing in relationship. 
It's not just one way. There are many people who have mentors, and sadly, here's what they do to their mentor. They want their mentor to give them everything, and they give nothing in return. That never works. So I want you to know it's time to deal with what that shadow is. Find that hero that can get you through it so you can vision your success. This is a quote that I wrote. Um, I was 24 years old. I left that company that I told you about, and I moved to a great nonprofit. I worked there for 15 years. I loved it. But when I started, I was friends with everybody. We were all on the same level. We all did the same job, but in different areas. We were really good friends. And then one day, I became the leader. I was the boss. And remember, I was everybody's friend. And now I became the boss. So this quote I wrote, because it's true. Sometimes you gotta step up and you gotta be the leader. And you may say, I'm not ready. Honestly, I didn't think I was ready, but I had to make myself ready. How did I do that? My confidence plan of action. So I'm just gonna to say to you, you know reticular activating system, the back part of your brain. That reticular activating system is your personal search engine. Who's heard of this before? Reticular activating system, anybody? The reticular activating system, back part of your brain, is your Google search. How many of you would like to guess what's on either side of these irises? Irises are the flower of loyalty. What do you think's on either side of this picture? Back row, anybody? What do you think's on either side of this picture? A lake. A lake. I love your visualization. I love the power of positivity in what you said. The reality, a crack house and a KFC. I took this in Cleveland, and here's what I did. I cropped it, because your brain will crop to the things that you want. I cropped it out because I wanted you to see this and say, your mind will deal with many things, but your particular activating system will zero in on what you want. How many of you are looking at a car or have ever bought a car? Raise your hand. Okay, what car, if you don't mind me? Pass on the Okay, so we have Honda Civic. When you were looking at the Honda Civic, did you research online? Okay, did you notice when you bought the car that you saw Honda Civics everywhere? That's your reticular activating system. She focused her mind to find it, to find the deal, to check out the car, smart move, spy strategy, good job, but it cropped out everything else, just like I did in this picture. So the power in what I'm asking you today, one last story for you, is what would you do if you knew you would not fail. We had a client, and we're gonna call her Frankie. Frankie used this book that I spent 10 years of research on and said, I'm working for a company, and they don't value me. They don't listen to me, and I'm not getting the promotion. She hired us, we worked through the book with her, and we came up with a strategy, and that strategy is that she would go to her new job and do things differently using the confidence plan of action. But I have to tell you about Rose. Rose is her coworker. Frankie was hired the same week as Rose. Frankie, our client, would go to the corporate staff meeting that started at 2 p.m. every month. She would go at 9 a.m. She would meet with everybody at the corporate headquarters, have meetings. She would volunteer and make sure in that volunteering, she was on the right committees with the right people, with the right opportunities, and the right resources. Frankie worked very, very, very hard. This was not easy for her. Her confidence was not at a place when we met her to do something like this, but she did it. Rose, who started the same week as Frankie, not our client, got to the corporate meeting 145 with a two o'clock meeting. Please understand, Frankie and Rose worked in divisions. They were very similar, they started the same week. Can you imagine Rose and how she felt when she found that she would only get 10% of her budget? Frankie got 90% of her budget. Why? I've been Rose. I've been the person who worked so hard, put my nose to the grindstone, thought I didn't have time to have a confidence plan of action. I didn't have time for all the networking and the relationships. But what did I miss? I missed the right resources, the right opportunities, and the right people. The difference between Frankie and Rose is just a confidence plan of action and a strategic personal brand. So I want to leave you with this. I believe this quote is true. To really feel success is to feel you're valued. And again, not only by others, 
but I want you to change it up. Do what the quote says. Value yourself. Know what your talents are. Unless you want to hire me to be your PR firm and hang out with me all day, which is really expensive, I just want you to know, you've got to do the work yourself. You've got to find the confidence pillars. You've got to set the mindset. You've got to prepare your heart. You've got to set this up and look at your calendar. And think about Frankie and Rose, because friends, confidence is a choice. Thank you.